slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. This is lesson 3.5b. And there's a link in the description to the geometry playlist if you miss 3.5a. Or you can watch the entire chapter 3 if you want to. It's also linked in an, at the end of the video. So we now know that the slope of a line is the difference in y values over the difference in x values for two points. We learned that in the last lesson. It's the rise over the run. We can use the slope formula to determine the slope m. We take two points and their x and y values. So x sub 1 and y sub 1 would be the coordinates for the first point, and x sub 2 and y sub 2 would be the coordinates for the second point. We substitute them into this formula, and we can find the slope. And m represents the slope. And we can use the slope formula to determine if two lines are parallel to each other or are perpendicular to each other. So remember, the slope is the ratio of the rise to the run, okay? Here's our first theorem for the lesson. We have the parallel lines theorem. And it says, in a coordinate plane, two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if, and we can abbreviate if and only if as IFF, if and only if they have the same slope. So they're parallel if they have the same slope. And any two vertical lines are parallel. So let's take a look at this graph here. We've got line AB on the top and line CD on the bottom. And we can see there's two points on each line, and we find the coordinates of each point. Point A is at 2 for x and 2 for y, and point B is at 8 for x and 7 for y. We substitute that into the slope formula, and we get 7 minus 2 over 8 minus 2. We do the math, and we get 5 over 6. That's our slope for line AB. For line CD, we look at the points, and C is at 4 for x and negative 4 for y, and D is at 10 for x and 1 for y. So we're going to do 1 minus negative 4 and over 10 minus 4. 1 minus negative 4, we're subtracting a negative, so we add the opposite. We get a positive 5, and 10 minus 4 is 6. Look, they both have a slope of 5 6 they both have a slope of 5, 6, so they're parallel according to the parallel lines theorem. Okay? They have the same slope. Now take a look at this one. They kind of look parallel, don't they? So we have line MN, and it's got an x-coordinate at M of a 1, and Y is a 3, and at N, it's a 4 for x and an 8 for Y. So we're going to do 8 minus 3 over 4 minus 1. For line MN, 8 minus 3 is a 5, 4 minus 1 is a 3, so we have a slope of 5 thirds. Now let's look at line PQ. P, we start with the one on the left, so we start with P, has an X value of 7 and a Y value of 1, and Q has an X value of 9.5 and a Y value of 6 minus 1 over 9.5 minus 7. Okay, we're going to do 6 minus 1 over 9.5 minus 7. 6 minus 1 is a 5. 9.5 minus 7 is a 2.5. They have different slopes. Very slightly different, but they aren't parallel. They kind of look like they could be, but we have to prove it algebraically. So be careful. You may have some lines, and they may look parallel, but, the, but only the slope formula will tell us for sure. Only until we solve it algebraically will we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, okay? Now we have the perpendicular lines theorem, and it says in a coordinate plane, two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative 1. So you see the word product, we know, well, we must have to multiply the two slopes together. And vertical and horizontal lines are perpendicular. So if they follow the lines on the grid, well, we know they're perpendicular, right? So take a look at this. We have line ST and we have line UV. The coordinates for S are negative 7 for X, 7 for Y. And for T, it's 9 for X and negative 5 for Y. So that means we have negative 5 minus 7 over 9 minus negative 7. Negative 5 minus 7 is a negative 12. 
and 9 minus a negative 7, we add the opposite, we get a 16, so we have negative 12 sixteenths. Now, for line uv, we have a 3 for u for x and a 4 for y, and for v, we have a 6 for x and an 8 for y. We go from left to right, so we started with the u and then the v. u is the first point, v is the second point. So we're going to have 8 minus 4 over 6 minus 3. 8 minus 4 is 4, 6 minus 3 is 3. We have a slope of 4 thirds. Now, we take the negative 12 sixteenths and the 4 thirds, we multiply them together, okay? We can cross cancel, can't we? We can say there's one 4 here and there's four 4s here, so we have a 1 and a 4 and we cancel out the 4 and the 16. And here we have one 3 and we have a negative 4 here. So really we're doing negative 4 fourths over 1 1, see? We multiply them together, we get negative 4 over 4, and it equals a negative 1. So yes, they're perpendicular. It worked out algebraically, okay? Multiplied the two slopes together. If they equal negative 1, they're perpendicular according to the perpendicular line's theorem. If a line has a slope of a over b, then the slope of a perpendicular line is negative b over a. And the ratios a over b and negative b over a are called opposite reciprocals. If we have a slope of two-thirds, the slope of a perpendicular line is negative three-halves. So not only are they flipping around like a reciprocal, but we're putting a negative sign in front of it if that has a positive. See? Here we have line st, and we've got a negative 2 for x and a 2 for y for s. We have a 5 and a negative 1 for t. In the formula, that means we have negative 1 minus 2 over 5 minus negative 2. Negative 1 minus 2 is a negative 3. 5 minus a negative 2, we add the opposite, we get a 7. We have negative 3 sevenths. Then for line uv, We've got a negative 1 and a negative 4. And for V, we've got a 3, 4. We do 4 minus the negative 4. Add the opposite, we get an 8. We have 3 minus a negative 1. We add the opposite, we get a 4. We can simplify this to, the, to a 2. So we know the slope is a 2. This slope is a negative 3 sevenths. Well, they're not the same, are they? So if line st has a slope of negative 3 sevenths and line uv has a slope of 2. The slopes aren't the same, so they're not parallel. And their product is not negative 1. They're not perpendicular. When we multiply negative 3 sevenths times 2, we get negative 6 sevenths. That's not a negative 1, okay? So we can classify parallel and perpendicular lines by using the parallel lines theorem and the perpendicular lines theorem. Our next lesson, 3.6a, we're going to talk about the forms of the equation of a line. We're going to talk about point-slope form and slope-intercept form, all right? And then, after 3.6 videos, we're going to be moving on to Chapter 4 and talking about triangles and congruence. I hope this was helpful. Hit the like button if it was. It lets me know and it lets YouTube know to put this higher up on their list. And I'll see you next time. Bye.